If you love Baltimore sports, you'll love WNST.net. I was talking about quite a bit linked to them. Inside linebacker Dante Hightower. Of course, the Castro falls to them. I think uh, you look at the value, they just couldn't pass that up. Is Spence the kind of guy who can come in and replace a James Ferry? I know outside, inside, kind of some demand as far as where he projects at the next level. Yeah, it, again, that, the, the beauty of that defense is it's very role specific. So I'm not going to ask too much of that young man. You, you've seen it for years, whether it's Harrison or Woodley. Or they get by with some of the outside guys that are down-the-line guys because it's role-specific. You don't have to expend a first-round draft choice on it. Same for the inside backers. We've been very successful with them. So this guy can fill a role. I mean, is he going to replace those guys right now? No. But it's not going to be too big for him to step in and do that. Decisions we referenced them in the first segment. They go Trent Richardson at the top of the draft and they combine that with Brandon Beaton later on in the first round. I think a lot of years everybody wants to think the Browns are turning a corner and they're finally doing the right things. Are you buying into the idea that Brandon Beaton was the best decision to make knowing he's going to have to play right now? And can the Browns win with a young man like Brandon Beaton playing quarterback right now? Taylor, first round quarterback in his entire NFL career. Assistant coach, coordinator, head coach, general manager. Because you don't, as is, believe me, I know, you, you know, you don't want to lose your guru card. And at this stage in Mike's career, right, that, he runs that yeah. risk if, if Wheaton doesn't turn out. Uh, but I applaud him. To, they, they got better. Turn interesting impact that. Wheaton will be fine within that system early. They're going to run the ball. They did some good things. They are still, the hard part is they're in year three of the home run regime. They are a, still an average football team We're in a very tough division. So could they get better? Could they grow? Absolutely. Uh, but they're still, I, I don't see other than, you know, keep in mind, and, and, and Trent Richardson, phenomenal player. But how well are they really going to run against the Steelers and the Ravens and even Cincinnati? And you're going to hang your hat on that. It's, it's, I, you need more pieces. They, they really, I don't know if they address the wide receiver situation. Right. Right. They've got uh, this Travis Benjamin from, from Florida, from Miami. Um, there's just still a lot of holes. They don't have that dynamic pass rusher. They don't have that dominant corner. Um, this team is still a ways away. That was going to be my question, by the way, Coach, is how can you turn things over to a rookie quarterback and say to him, It's going to be tough. This kid has the maturity, though, to deal with it. And uh, Brandon Wheaton does. He's like 20, 28, between 29 in October, I think, or when the season starts. Uh, I like the kid, uh, but he's going to be tested. They're going to run the ball heavily and hope that that's enough to uh, right. take out some wins. Right. Now, do you commend them for taking that risk? I mean, you just said, I mean, with all the progress they've made on the home run, we're still so far below the, the top three dogs in the AFC North. So what, what we know now, we didn't know then was that they didn't believe in uh, McCoy. Uh, they, were, you know, they said all the things that you say as a coach. Joe, no, this is our guy. Yeah, right. we're good to go. They obviously didn't, uh, which is fine. That's an assessment. I hope McCoy is a good, solid backup in my book. Uh, they weren't going to be, they're not going to be better or worse with Brandon Wheaton quarterback and Colt McCoy this year. And if they think there's that upside, then have at it. I applaud them for, for taking that step. We'll see if it pays off. It's a tough position to be in when you're going into year three. Uh, I'm saying for Mike Homer, for Pat Shermer, it's just year two. Uh, but in a very, very tough division. Coach, before we wrap up the segment, I want to address three other teams in the AFC that I think a lot of people would assume perhaps could stand in the way of the Ravens reaching the Super Bowl. We'll start with the team they lost to in the AFC Championship game, that being the New England Patriots. Obviously, two players were very familiar with Chandler Jones, Dante Hightower, become their first two picks. How much did they help themselves in trying to defend their AFC crown? Great deal, because you can see by the draft, the first four picks in the first two days were all defense. Yeah. Uh, they've got what they need offensively. Uh, they've added some, some a mix of players, whether it's Brandon Roy, Dante Stallworth, Gonzalez Gallery on the inside. I think picking up Jonathan Fanini from Cincinnati defensively was a good pick. Really only lost Ben Jarvis Green Ellis. They're, they're going to be right there. They're going to be a good team. Uh, they're going to be better defensively. 
defensively. They're not a dominant defense, but better defensively. Hightower and uh, Chandler Jones, a good solid, again, very skill specific, role specific, uh, will fit in very well and will play from day one. Your thoughts on the Houston Texans who made it winning merciless, and, and clearly this is a team uh, going in, or at the end of last year, no Matt Shaw, no Mario Williams, and they gave the Ravens everything they could handle in the division. Yeah, it came within a, uh, a series of opponent uh, championship game. Um, what, concern, what concern me is when you have a uh, Wade Phillips, who uh, we talked about, Whitney Merciless, someone that the, the uh, Ravens were interested in, who fit their scheme very, very well. Um, they, too, are a team that didn't need any front line starters to come in, so they developed some depth. Uh, they're going to be a very good football team. I mean, they took the Ravens to darn near uh, the last series of the game with TJ Yates. Uh, you can imagine getting Matt Shaw back if he stays healthy. Uh, a healthier and foster, a better offensive line. They've added some, some pieces in there. They're going to be a better football team. Maybe the uh, the sexy pick to win the AFC next season might be the Denver Broncos, obviously, with Peyton Manning. They made an interesting decision moving back to grab Brock Osweiler as a backup quarterback. Probably a good move considering Peyton Manning's health, but I, I don't know if they addressed the other things that maybe they should have tried to address during the course of the draft to really get better as a team. I think what struck me as being interesting is that they, they seem to be comfortable with the skill group they have. Right. They signed Brandon Stokely, our which, we, which, who we still love here. Absolutely. And, and, and he's, he worked with Peyton Manning, so he's basically the winning coach on the field. Eric Decker's a good, solid receiver. They, they signed two tight ends. Jacob Tannen now filled in very well yep. for Dallas Clark. So they're comfortable with the skill position. They've got a good offensive line. Um, I'm not sure about the running back. Now, Rodney Hellman from San Diego State will be a good pickup. I'm not sure they have their nickel guy, uh, which would be a pretty good defense now. They can bring that rush with Vaughn Miller and Elvis Turner go up at the back end. Losing Brian Dawkins hurt in the secondary. So, but yeah, this could be the AFC West. You know, we, we, all, we all did it, right? We all looked and said, oh boy, right? It's going to be the AFC West. Right. How great is that? Right. Now Denver, San Diego, we know what the, that's what life is in yeah. San Diego. We try to ignore the bad ever happened. I think Kansas game. City is going to be a good football team. I, I feel like they couldn't figure out why Big Man did not look at them as one of his team. They, they've got Twain Bow, they get Baldwin now in the second year, they get Tony Moyaki back. Uh, they got good, they got Don Terry Poe in the middle of that defense. And Romeo Cannell will use him intelligently as the nose guard position. They're a good football team as well. So that, that all of a sudden that division got a little bit tougher. This is the part where you go on the record right now and say, but it doesn't matter because the Baltimore Ravens are winning the AFC and going to the Super Bowl. You know, it's funny, you know, I get when, whenever I make whatever observation I make, right. uh, particularly when I'm on Fox, if I say something good, well, he just doesn't want to win his old team. And, right. you know, if I right. say something bad, well, he's just knocking those guys. They got rid, you know, there's, yeah. there's no middle ground when I make that observation. Um, they are going to be right there. I don't know that I would put a lot of money on any AFC team saying, no, this, this other team is going to go. Obviously, uh, New England's going to be a factor right there. Uh, is Denver really going to make a run at this? We'll see. Pittsburgh, I think, is in transition as you go through it. Um, I don't know that, you know, again, I think the Houston Texans will be a factor. Uh, so, yeah, if you're, gonna, if you're a betting man, that's a, that's a pretty solid bet. As a uh, partial boss of mine, wait till you see how I spin that the same mm -hmm. that you said the Ravens are going to the Super Bowl last year. Wait till you see how. some more of those. I think the nasty one's going to come up and finish this up here tonight. We'll take a quick break. Come right back with more. This is WNST. If you love Baltimore sports, you'll love WNST.net.